If artificial intelligence is your specialty area, then one of the big questions you're probably asking yourself is, what do you need to be studying? Where do you need to invest your long-range efforts, your efforts that will guide your attention over this year and the next few years to come? This is a question that one of my students asked me at the beginning of this fall quarter in 2020. So, in brief, there are three major areas of artificial intelligence that are going to see the next significant evolution. And by this, I'm not talking about software or new hardware or algorithms that are essentially extensions of existing algorithms. What we're talking about are the fundamentals. So if we go down to the bottom tier, the root core problems, the things that have actually, they've been around for many, many years, sometimes to the very dawn of artificial intelligence. These are areas that are now coming to a new level of significance because we solved all the easy stuff and we solved the things that can be done by using one kind of algorithm more or less in isolation, meaning we solved everything that can be done with deep learning. You know, we stacked the layers again and again. And that's an area that is about played out, but let me go back to the beginning of these three areas. The first, and this is recognized by many leading researchers right now, and I will give some examples, most likely in a blog post to come, because that way I can link to all their blog sites, quote things, uh, give links to significant articles, and, oh, not only that, links appropriately, appropriately formatted in Chicago style. This is for my students. We're shifting to Chicago style. Everything that you need to follow through. But that first area has to do with that very old dichotomy between symbolic AI and coming up from the bottom, grassroots, connectionist, neural network types of AI. And the two have always been in very disparate worlds, and they've never really connected. They didn't connect back in the 1970s when Marvin Minsky was at uh, MIT, Paul Werbus, who was the breakthrough genius who got us the backpropagation algorithm for neural networks, then at MIT, but he got his PhD out of Harvard. They were representative of that generation of the first conflict between the two approaches. Later in the 1980s, late 1980s, 1986, we were getting the AI breakthrough. It was actually the neural networks breakthrough. And that took center stage for a while, but now we have both. We have a lot of symbolic-based AI, and we have connectionist-based or neural network types of AI. And the two don't always talk together very well, and there's some very amusing um, instances where that connection is not happening to our pleasure. So this is a huge area. This, if 2020 and our coming decade is going to be about anything, it's going to be that. That's going to be the big breakthrough area where you get more and more connection between those two realms. Second big topic. Now, if you know AI at all, you know that deep learning is based on the Boltzmann machine. It's layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of Boltzmann machines, sometimes with convolutional neural networks, CNN, CERNIN, but even those who are getting their weights established typically with a Boltzmann machine kind of learning. Now, the Boltzmann machine is a kind of neural network that relies on statistical physics for its learning algorithm. And that statistical physics, in particular, is the Ising equation with a unique little spin that made the Boltzmann machine such a breakthrough. This is Jeffrey Hinton, and he was building on the work of Hopfield. So Hopfield had his breakthrough work, which is very significant, 1982, and Hinton in 1986. Hinton and colleagues, there were... There were three of them involved. We will, in some subsequent vids, go and look at this in, in great detail. The point is, that very specific equation, which is about as simple as you can make a revision of the original Ising equation, it is about as simple as you can get. It's, it's mind-boggling simple once you get through, you know, all the necessary physics to understand it. You just look at it and say, wow, this is you know, really, really simple. And that equation is used to govern establishing connection weights between layers. One of the 
things that makes the Bolton machine work so well is that there's no intra, that's the right word, intra-layer connectivity. It's all inter-layer. Layer, you know, on the bottom to the layer next, layer next to the ne next plus one, and on up. So the um, a lot of the AI breakthrough over the past decade, past two decades, has been in making those multiple sequences of layer-to-layer -layer connections work out well. That's the deep learning approach. But they're all fundamentally built on the same equation. And I'm going to suggest that this whole approach has about played out in terms of like being a vein of ore. We're going to still get benefit from it. And it's never going to go away. It's, it's integral. It's essential. But when we strip it on all the way on down to the basics, when we get rid of... Um, things in our head that might, you know, take attention, such as data sets and transfer learning and processing methods and a bunch of, you know, higher level implementation level things and get down to the equation, we can look at them and say, you know, that equation has not evolved fundamentally since 1982, 1986. In other words, the equation itself right now is more than 35 years old in terms of its application to AI. So we need to step back and say, well, you know, is there room? And I'm going to propose that there is room. In fact, I'm working on an equation that, that I think has a lot of potential for new growth subject for different vids. Third area. It has to do with planning. And once again, this is one of those early, early AI topics. I mean, you know, first instances uh, Newell and Simon, the, the founders of AI, were all into planning methods way in the beginning. And it's still an, you know, hugely an important topic. For example, an autonomous vehicle isn't going to go very far if it can't plan. <laughs> Many other instances, even like a robot for a factory floor that is going to be just one nudge above simplistic is going to have to have some planning capability. How do you respond to a change in the environment, a new task, some complexity of, of interleaving multiple tasks, that kind of thing. So planning methods. Right now, a lot of the attention is on reinforcement learning. All very well and good. A lot of a lot has been done with reinforcement learning. And we were talking all the way up to things like AlphaGo, which is the AI version of a go-playing game that beat the world's champion. Even so, even so, limitations. And by the way, the algorithms behind this planning method, those are reinforcement learning. We are going back again to the early and mid-1990s. We're talking work by Barto and Sutton, Paul Werbus, who was then at National Science Foundation, was funding their work, speaking very highly of it. But hey, 1990s. The most recent work along those lines, an area that I think has the greatest opportunity to provide new benefit, is the work being done by Carl Friston and colleagues in England. They're looking at variational bays. And that's a, a somewhat subtle, complex, delicate subject. And it depends for you to learn about that and understand it and truly get it. It depends on your mastering the free energy equation, which again, is the same kind of equation that you use when you're learning the Boltzmann machine. So our next job is to establish, I know this is going to sound kind of funny, but learning objectives for 2021. So let's, let's give some thought to that. Actually, what we're going to do here is break down this dis set of discussions on the next generation areas of artificial intelligence into a series of small vids. These are just going to touch on the subject. This sort of, they're going to introduce it. And we're not going to try to go into any depth. We're not even going to do a formal introduction. Each of these will become a full sequence of vids in 2021. At least that's the plan. So I'll see you in the future. Have a great day. By the way, this is Dr. Aliana J. Moren. And you were here with me in AI After Hours. I've just promised you a series of upcoming vids. Recapping what we discussed, they're going to be on the connection between symbolic and neural network kinds of AI, and then the statistical physics that you need in order to understand the Boltzmann machine, and then from there to understand deep learning, and then 
taking that statistical physics fundamental base, that is specifically knowledge of the free energy equation, into variational bays and other methods at the frontiers of planning and reasoning. Now to do this, please like, subscribe, and hit that notify bell. That way you'll get word in all the future vids. And also, please check out the YouTube channel that I've just created here on AI Fundamentals. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.